2016 has been an interesting year for massively multiplayer role-playing games. We're now seeing less and less big releases from large well-known studios and more announcements of highly ambitious projects by smaller indie devs through crowdfunding. Unfortunately, none of these games have been released yet, so we'll have to wait another year to see if they can make my list. But until then, enjoy my top 10 MMOs of 2016, bearing in mind that this is an entirely subjective list and I still haven't found an MMO good enough for me to dedicate all my free time to. Number 10, Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul is a free to play Eastern MMORPG that makes this list purely due to its really fun combo based action combat. I'd certainly describe this as a game that's more focused on PvP with its highly popular competitive arena mode that you'll be spamming at endgame. Blade and Soul does have PvE content in the form of dungeons and a few world bosses, although I never really found that side of the game to be fun or as compelling as the PvP. Visually, Blade and Soul does look a little bit outdated now and the world it's set in is instant with a lot of loading screens and invisible barriers which I don't really like too much. It's also very heavy on the eastern theme. Only really a game that I could recommend if you're a big fan of PvP. Number 9, Arcage. Arcage is a really good MMORPG. It has fast paced tab targeting combat that feels impactful and has great animations. It's a completely open world game without loading screens, has a mixture of both PvP and PvP. PvE content, an in-depth crafting and profession system, real space player housing, and the ability to sail the seas in your very own boat. Sounds amazing, right? Well, what's the catch? Unfortunately, Publisher Tryon is the catch. Despite being a great game, Arcage is held back by many pay-to-win elements on the cash shop, a ton of RNG when it comes to item upgrades, and grindy levelling that will make you want to quit the game before you get to the fun stuff. Recently, as of making this video, however, Arcage opened up fresh start servers which will have a restricted cash shop for a few months. So during that time, I'll probably be playing this game a lot myself before it's inevitably ruined by the cash shop again. Number 8, Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV is probably the second most popular MMORPG out there behind World of Warcraft. Visually, Final Fantasy XIV has some rather nice graphics for an MMO. It has instanced player housing, tab targeting combat, an instanced world as well as a subscription fee to pay each month. One of my favourite things about this game by far is its in-game music which is both beautiful and fitting for a Final Fantasy game. It also has an interesting feature where every class slash job in the game can be levelled up on a single character, which means there's no need to make alts. The reason I've rated this game so low is that my experience with it so far has been incredibly boring. I've had over 70 hours playtime so far on my level 50 rogue slash ninja and wouldn't really consider consider any of that time spent to have been fun. This is certainly one of those games where people constantly say the game doesn't get fun until you're level 60, so I guess I'll have to play more to see if that's true, but so far I've found the combat and movement to be slow, unresponsive and lacks any kind of impact. The way narrative is delivered through dull text-based cutscenes has made me lose interest in the story, and due to the instanced world I haven't found any enjoyment from moving zones or exploring either. Regardless of my opinion though, many people enjoy this game and claim it to be the best MMO out there, so maybe it's worth checking out if you haven't done so already. Number 7, Terra. Terra is a free to play action combat MMO that I'm sure most people will have a great time with for the first few hours at least. Terra is known for its top tier action combat and epic fights with big ass monsters. The game also has a mixture of both PvP and PvE content, so there's something for everyone. Initially I loved Terra and despite Despite its weirdness, it left a really good first impression on me. The more I played it though, the more I started to find the levelling process in this game to be soul crushingly boring. It doesn't take overly long to level, it just feels like you spend more time riding your mount from A to B than actually killing stuff. Once I hit max level, I kinda lost interest in the game due to getting bored of my gunner. I kinda wish I picked a melee class with more mobility such as the ninja. Regardless, it's an MMO with fun combat, cool looking monsters, awful levelling experience set in a world that feels static and lifeless. 
Number 6, The Elder Scrolls Online. If I was to make a list of the top 10 most improved MMORPGs, The Elder Scrolls Online would surely take the number 1 spot. This game was an absolute mess upon release, but over the years has received update after update that's fixed the issues it had at launch, expanded the game and fundamentally improved it. Visually, ESO is quite a good looking game for an MMO and certainly does enough to get you immersed via its world design and fantastic audio work. As of recently, ESO released an update called One Tamriel, in which players can explore the entire world, accept any quest and fight any monster regardless of their level, as the content scales to your character. For me personally, I've never been able to truly get into any of the Elder Scrolls games. I'm not sure if it's the combat, the general theme, or maybe something else. It's just not for me, but I can still appreciate this as a really good MMORPG that I wish I could genuinely get into. Regardless, it's still an MMO that I'd recommend people to at least try if they haven't done so already. Number 5 Wildstar Wildstar is a game that I've always rooted for and wanted to do well. When I first played it I was left with really positive first impressions of its combat and overall style. It's a theme park MMO that feels really well polished and familiar if you've played any other theme park MMOs in the past. Despite going free to play in 2016, the game has been on a steady decline ever since and doesn't really seem as though it will ever reach the popularity of many other games on this list. I think the main problem with Wildstar is that from an outsider's point of view, it looks like an MMO aimed at kids with its hyper stylized art style, however its endgame content is designed for a more hardcore player base with some of the most intense and difficult raids out there. I don't think many hardcore MMO players want to get invested in a world that's perceivably aimed at a young audience, even though in reality that's not really the case. For me personally, Wildstar's a fun MMO MMO that I jump into from time to time, but its overall aesthetic is a bit too cartoony for my liking. I genuinely think the game would have done better if they designed this from the bottom up as an entry level MMO for younger gamers. Regardless, if you're considering giving Wildstar a try, just know that it's one of the few free to play, non pay to win MMOs out there. Has both PvP and PvE content, some of the best player housing out there, and a very unique and fun combat system. If only it was more popular. Number four. Or Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is probably the best free to play MMORPG out there and one that I recommend quite often. It has smooth, fast paced combat with the option of changing between tab targeting and action targeting, a mixture of both PvP and PvE content with large realm vs realm battles, as well as dynamic events that spawn in the world and level scaling both in the world and in PvP. Guild Wars 2 is a game that I like to jump on and play from time to time, but I've never really felt the need to sit down and play it all day. Something about it just doesn't suck me in and give me the same feeling of progression that I feel with other MMOs, and I'm not too sure why. Maybe I just need to find myself a meaningful goal to aim towards to keep me playing, but as of right now I don't have that. Regardless, it's still a quality MMORPG. Number 3, Old School RuneScape. Old School RuneScape is a game that I first tried back in 2006. It was the first MMO I played and it had me instantly hooked. Over the years it went through many changes that I didn't really like and I eventually stopped playing altogether in 2012 with the release of the Evolution of Combat update, which basically added a new combat system to the game and in my opinion took away its simplistic charm. In 2013 players voted to bring back old school RuneScape servers which obviously made me really happy. The thing I really like about old school RuneScape is that it's a very relaxing game with a ton of things to do. Due to how it's not a high effort game I mostly play it when editing videos. I train my stats, make money and prepare my character for PvP, which is the thing I find the most fun in RuneScape due to how you can loot players for their armour and inventory upon death. Another thing I have to give RuneScape credit for is its questing, which in my opinion is the best I've ever experienced in an MMO. Some quests take several hours to complete and take you across the entire game world. They're not just kill and collect repetitive nonsense, they're stories that give you a sense of accomplishment upon completion, as well as giving you the ability to use better armour and weapons. I think the most unique aspect of RuneScape, however, which I've yet to see another MMO try and copy, is the way it deals with your character's level. There's basically seven different combat stats in RuneScape. Attack, Strength, Defense, Magic, Ranged, Prayer and Hit Points. Your character's overall combat level is based on these stats, and due to how the PvP system works in this game, players try to make the most powerful characters possible 
possible whilst keeping their combat level low. For example, my character has level 60 attack, level 1 defense, I'm working on 99 strength and 99 range. My combat level is only 77 which means I deal a lot more damage than a normal character of my level whilst taking more damage in the process. There's a lot of different account builds in RuneScape which in my opinion is a big reason why people still play to this day. Each account build has different best in slot items that need to be hunted down and different pros and cons. One thing that's a big put off with RuneScape however is that the grind is very much real. Number 2 Black Desert Online Black Desert Online is a game that I've had a love-hate relationship with. It has so many amazing, fun and immersive elements to it, with an equal amount of stuff that will make you want to pull your hair out. It's certainly a game that craves your time and you'll need to invest a great deal of time into it if you truly want to get anywhere. The reason Black Desert is so high on this list, despite me making a few videos criticising it in the past, is that unlike many games on this list, it has an interesting world that you feel genuinely connected to. You see leaves fall from the trees, plants move when you walk through them, there's no invisible barriers, it has a dynamic weather system, an active day-night cycle that affects gameplay. It without a doubt has the most realistic and immersive game world of any MMO out there, which is something I find really important. The world doesn't feel dead or lifeless and you're given many ways to shape and interact with the world through professions, housing and node investment. It's also a game with a very very fun, fast-paced action combat system which is arguably the best in the genre. Where Black Desert starts to go downhill is in its item upgrade system which is purely RNG and can be quite brutal if you fail an upgrade. There's also no visual progression when levelling up in this game. If you don't spend money on a cash shop costume you'll look exactly the same at level 56 as you did at level 1. There's also no decent traditional PvE content in this game, so if that's what you're looking for this isn't the game for for you. For me, Black Desert is a game that's best played casually. Just enjoy the world and play it at your own pace. If you want to stand a chance in endgame PvP, you'll need to dedicate a crazy amount of time keeping up with the endless grind, which is what made me stop playing initially as I found the PvP in this game to be really fun, yet it was too stressful to keep up in terms of gear and levels. Regardless of its flaws, I still think BDO is a really good MMORPG. Number 1 World of Warcraft Legion it's hard for me not to list World of Warcraft Legion as the number one MMORPG on this list. Despite me time and time again saying that I'm done with the game, something about it always brings me back, and the recent expansion was no different. In comparison to the previous expansion, Warlords of Draenor, I think Legion is a big improvement. The storytelling and general theme is much more interesting, the game feels as smooth and well polished as ever, and it's nice to see a larger focus on class fantasy this time around. For the first month or so of its release, I played the crap out of Legion and had a great time in the process. As time went on, however, I started to feel burnt out and eventually lost interest in playing, which is what always happens with me and WoW. I have to admit though, I did stop playing a bit sooner than I'd have liked. I think the problem with Legion is that you feel locked into a single class and spec due to how the artifact power and legendary systems work. The game's more grindy than it ever has been and for me, the thought of grinding just to keep up made me feel an overwhelming amount of apathy towards the whole of Legion's endgame. I think a grind in an MMO is fine to a certain extent, but when it feels mandatory, endless and a bit of a chore, that's when I start to lose interest. But yeah, that's my top 10 MMOs of 2016. I really hope next year's list contains more new releases. Currently I'm just bouncing between a few different MMOs and don't really have a main one that I play more than anything else, hence why I felt it necessary to include what I don't enjoy about some of these games rather than it just being an entirely positive list. Just in case you want a more objective list of the top 10 MMOs, I threw out a straw poll to my viewers on Twitch to vote on. It has over 2,000 votes and goes as follows. Number 10, Blade and Soul. Number 9, Terra. Number 8, RuneScape. Number 7, Star Wars The Old Republic. Number 6, Black Desert Online. Number 5, Wildstar. Number 4, Final Fantasy XIV. Number 3, The Elder Scrolls Online. Number 2, Guild Wars 2 and number one, World of Warcraft. But that's it for this video anyway, guys. I really hope you managed to get some use out of it and maybe even discovered some new MMOs to try out. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your own top 10 MMO lists in the comments below. And as always, giving this video a like will really help me out, so I'd appreciate it a lot. Thanks for watching. You take it easy, and I'll see you again really soon.